start. Introduce yourself. All right, yeah, hi, I'm Daniel Harlow uh, from Harvard, soon to be MIT. Uh, not because Harvard, Harvard is going to turn into MIT, but I'm going <laughs> to. Um, so this talk is going to be kind of an experiment. Um, usually at these different Cubist things, I try to give technical talks, and I think that actually that's a real strength of a lot of what's been going on, right? You know, there are equations, there are theorems, uh, there are solvable examples. Uh, you know, I think these are really essential for us to learn things. Um, but I, I couldn't really think of a technical talk that I thought would succeed with this audience. Um, so I decided uh, instead to try something new. Um, so I'm just going to, it's going to be kind of more of a meditation on some of the things I feel I've learned over the last few years, or that we as a field have learned. Um, and, and hopefully uh, there will be some interesting discussion. So maybe there will be a bit more back and forth uh, with the audience uh, than uh, so far in the previous talks. Okay. So my title is uh, Hardware and Software and Physics. And so I'm going to try and explain how the idea of hardware and software from computer science has become for me really essential in, in how I think about pretty much everything in physics. So, so traditionally, right, so I don't know, maybe let's say all the physics um, is about, I'll say, hardware, um, right? So, so, you know, we have, we have stuff, you know, matter, whatever, and then we explain it by saying um, that it's made out of atoms. Uh, and then, well, then we, say, then we explain the atoms by saying that they're made out of particles. Um, and, well, then, then maybe we, we try to say that we can explain the particles, um, you know, by making them out of uh, strings. Uh, or something like that, right? And, and this is sort of the traditional definition of, of doing physics is, is kind of, you know, putting, you know, figuring out what's further down uh, on this table. Um, now, um, even, in, even in this sort of standard way of doing things, there, there is software. Um, so, for example, the, you know, the, so, so there is some software, right? Um, so the, the, you know, the atoms, obey um, the Schrodinger equation, you know, and the, the particles um, obey the standard model of particle physics. Um, but the software is hardwired, right? It's the, it's the software that's built into the hardware, and it's kind of the hardware is the stuff that we're really interested in. I don't understand your distinction between software and hardware. I think, I think the particle is defined by obeying those equations. Um, well, let, I, no, but I think, well, I mean, that's fine, but, uh, but somehow, so, I mean, I guess somehow we don't really distinguish between them traditionally, right? So, yeah, I mean, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm willing to say that, you know, maybe these are sort of, in some sense, the same thing. I mean, we, but for example, we don't usually say, oh, let's take the same particles and run different software on them, right? I mean, usually we, we say we kind of, you know, there's a, there's a specific set of software, which is the right software. And it's the software that the hardware is running, and that's kind of it. Well, so how do you put quantum field theory into the framework of the system? different hardware that all obeys the. Yeah, yeah, that's different kinds of hardware that obey different, you know, different equations and so on. But I mean, but I mean, we, but but that's mathematics, right? We want to know like the the quantum field theory or the string theory or whatever the thing is. That, so the, how do you mean like the, 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 the action is like a software, and the, the field you're anyway down is a hardware? Yeah, I guess I was kind of saying it that way. Um, yeah, somehow, I, I guess I was thinking about it as this is kind of like the Hilbert space, and this is kind of like the Hamiltonian. I guess that's sort of how I was splitting it in my head. Um, and, and then we need to know both, right? We need to know the Hilbert space, and we need to know the Hamiltonian. Is this the same or related to distinctions between initial conditions and laws of motion? Uh, yeah, I think so. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the set of this is like the set of initial conditions, and this is like the equations of motion. Yeah, I guess that's how I was I was doing it. Um, so what I want to say though is that you know this this way of thinking about things I think is just becoming more and more outdated or antiquated, at least uh, in my mind. Um, and I think that software uh, is becoming more important in a sense where we'll see now that maybe it's a little bit different than, than what we were just saying here, just you know, it's sort of being the same as the hardware. Um, so uh, I think one of the primary drivers of this initially was that 
we can have the same hardware, or sorry, we can have different hardware that's running the same software. Okay, so 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 we can have different. Uh, and, and I can give some examples just so that this doesn't just get hopelessly vague. Uh, but let me let me first say the words. The same software. Um, so 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 one example of this is that in the standard model we have the Higgs mechanism, uh, and then um, in uh, the theory of superconductivity we have the DCS theory. Uh, so then. In both cases, the, the mathematics is kind of the same, right? You have the Higgs mechanism uh, going on, and there's some asymmetry which is being broken. But the you know the actual stuff you know that's realizing that is quite different, right? You know, in, in this case, you know, it's some um, you have some you know lattice of uh, you know ions or something, and then you have uh, you know, electrons swimming around and so on. Uh, and where you know whereas here it's fundamental particles. So you know another another I think important example of what I mean of different hardware running the same software is that you can have the 3D Ising model, right, which is a, a spin system, uh, and then but it's kind of running the same software as as the as the liquid gas uh, phase transition. Um, so so this is another example where somehow you know the hardware you know the actual physical stuff is kind of you know irrelevant almost you know and. and the software is the same. That's, that's actually what I meant by quantum field yeah. very big uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I mean, I somehow want to say that this is maybe, you know, here, here somehow we, we kind of care less about the hardware, right? I mean, you know, there is some hardware and, you know, we care about it, but, but somehow the, the, the interesting stuff uh, is the same even on quite different hardware. Um, uh, should I think of this as a, a simulation? Meaning, uh, uh, yeah, we're get, to, hold, hold that, hold that thought. We're gonna, and we're gonna get into that. Um, but let, let me just give one more example. So, 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 uh, so, you know, another, another thing. Uh, so, I'll say this. This will be a little bit heuristic, but, 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 strongly interacting uh, quarks and gluons is somehow running the same software as quantum gravity uh, in ADS five. And I, I want to give that as another example of. You know, different different hardware running the same software. Um, so I think that this sort of malleability, where the the same software is interesting, studying many different physical systems, is something that we're just seeing um, more and more of. And then, in fact, like thinking about stuff, you know, specifically in terms of as software, in terms of algorithms and efficiency and so on. Uh, is 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 something that we're getting a lot of mileage out of. So so some examples of that, right? Which we'll hear about uh, some of which we'll hear about in this talk, is you know classifying the phases of materials by understanding with you know what's the depth of the quantum circuit that re that relates a state in, in, in you know a state one state to another state, right? You say they're in the same phase if there's a constant depth of quantum circuit relating the two states. You know, another one, you know, another another example of sort of using the software kind of thinking um, is this idea that you should think about holography as quantum error correcting code. You know, somehow there's the, there's this information in the center of the bulk, which is sort of the logical information that that your computer is is doing manipulations on, but then it's encoded in some complicated way into the physical hardware uh, as a quantum error correcting code. And I think also the, the some of the things that Adam talked about and that other people will, will talk about, right, where you, you, you think about questions like chaos or scrambling. Uh, um, but you think about them, you know, not in terms of what are the things that are that they're doing the scrambling or the chaos, but you just think about sort of where the information is growing going. Like how are the operators, how is the complexity of operators growing? Uh, and, and, and the hardware that's doing it is kind of irrelevant, right? I mean, actually, nobody even asked Adam during his talk, what are his qubits, right? I mean, there aren't any qubits in N equals 4 super Yang mills, right? And, you know, so, but somehow nobody even asked him. They were just fine talking about the qubits, right? So, you know, and I mean, we could complain about that, and sometimes I do complain to Adam about that, but I mean, there is some <laughs> method to this, right? I mean, there's something to be said for just thinking about the qubits, right? And now, actually, the, the main thing I wanted to talk about today, though, is an example of this which I would say has really gone all the way. And I think it's an example which I think is really worth thinking about a lot. 
And actually, it's from condensed matter physics. So, so in condensed matter physics, there's this whole fashion now where you take a phenomenon in quantum field theory, and then you try to find a material which realizes it. And then, you know, there's a long list of these things. So let's let's say, so, and, and this word realizing is very is a very loaded word, right? And so I really want to get it. So realizing QFT uh, phenomena. Um, so so let me just give some examples. So we're all on the same page. So so there's there are topological insulators is an example of this. Um, Majorana fermions, fermions, um, supersymmetry, uh, and then maybe more reference to this, closer to this conference, SYK maybe, uh, out of time order correlation functions, maybe, right? I mean, you know, all, these are all examples where there are ideas that people were discussing, and then people started writing papers about, oh, well, let's try to, let's try to find some condensed matter system that realizes this. So what I want to ask is, why are we doing that? Why, why are we trying to realize these systems, you know, these, these equations on condensed matter systems? So one, one possible justification... You get the right papers. <laughs> I'm trying to be charitable to the field here, all right? <laughs> so, so, I mean, one, one thing you can say, which I'll get back to, and which I think is important, is that sometimes, uh, by doing that, then you can understand what happens in these systems, right? These systems might have complicated dynamics. You know, even if you can write down the equations, you might not be able to solve the equations. But if you can, you know, you have a condensed matter system that's simulating them, then at least you'll see what happens with these equations. Okay, and we'll get back to that. But actually, the 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 thing which I've heard from you know from well-respected senior physicists, you know, is that it's really that this makes it real. Right. That somehow, you know, I mean, you know, if you, that somehow, you know, for, so I don't, I don't put names on anybody, but somebody once said to me, this is all just mathematics until you have a system that realizes it. Okay. And, I mean, and for example, I mean, I, I mean, to, to take a sociological example, right, obviously the Nobel Prize Committee, this is how they think about things, right? Um, and what I want to say is that this is just ridiculous, right? I mean, this is just not, this is not the way that the wind is blowing in physics, right? I mean, how is realizing one of these systems in a lump of metal any different than simulating it on a computer? That's, that's the question that I really want to ask. Now, and I want to say it's not. You're just running the same software on different hardware. I don't care whether the hardware is a you know, lattice of ions or, <laughs> or it's a quantum computer. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So, so well, now let me first say that, I mean, there is, you know, so yeah. any, any, claim along, right, any, any, any statement along these lines, we have to at least so we have to at least talk about efficiency a little bit, right? Because you know, I mean, so I, I mean, actually, we don't even need a quantum computer, right? You, on a classical computer, you can simulate any of these things, right? But it'll just take a really long time. Okay. So, um, and so you know, there's something to be said for an exponential speed up in efficiency. I mean, I, I still wouldn't say it makes it more real. So I mean, I still I still think that, that that doesn't defend sort of this point of view, but it's certainly at least you know I mean still exponential speed up that's good right. But once we have quantum computers, why run it all together on you know, the logic of the equations? Right. Exa yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean right. somehow. So so. Sorry. Yeah. Suppose you turn back the clock and you knew about hadrons and not QCD. Would you really argue against the traditional? No, I would not. I'm going to get back to that, right? But that's but that's not what's happening here, right? Right. right. So, so that's an example of you do an experiment and you don't understand the result of the experiment. You try to come up with a theory. This is the opposite of that. This is you have a theory, and then you try to come up with some material system that is described by that theory. I mean, I, 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 mean, I think this is really uh, this is this is sort of the triumph of software over hardware, right? I mean, you know, you, just, you take the software that you like and you say, I'm going to find some hardware that runs it. It, yeah. it, it could get even worse in, in uh, quantum optics and foundations of quantum mechanics because everybody believes quantum mechanics, but then they do experiments to prove that uh, the bell inequalities are violated. Uh, yeah, so that, I, that, I'm also not a huge fan of that. I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. What can I say? Uh, in, his, uh, in his realization, one, one achieved one achieve the quantum mechanics, and the other one achieved the 
question. Well, there's not necessarily a you know, real reason, but it's, it's, if you want to realize W eta, you, you need a U based on radius theory. Um, I mean, that, so part of the effort with <coughs> realization is, uh, let's say, in anomalies, in, uh, uh, some services with anomalies are realized in homology integrators. That's yeah. how they find the U based on radius ways to define it. I'm not sure what you mean by UV complete. I mean, so I define the series on the lattice. But condensed matter system, any condensed matter system is always going to be a lattice realization, right? Yeah, yeah but I mean, there's that's things you can't realize on lattices. I mean, like in the yeah. effort of realizing, oh, okay. if you succeed, that proves you can, you can, you can have a UV. Well, no, 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 no. You have to be careful about locality here. I mean, I, I don't think you can claim that that a quantum field theory with an anomaly can't be simulated on a quantum computer with a memory made out of qubits. It just might be that the sort of the model of the state space won't be local, right? But 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 the you can still certainly simulate it. Yes, Carol. But isn't it true that you can simulate on physical systems? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get to yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to push back on this in a minute. But I, I first I want to emphasize that you know I feel this is I mean here the pendulum is really swung from this right where 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 you know where where we were trying to describe the hardware. What about the top light over there? There's ECF, but then there's ITC, where we really would like to. Yeah, I'm going to discuss that. Yeah, I'm going to discuss that. Um, okay, so so I mean, this kind of thing, you know, it's almost it's almost like experimental condensed matter physics is merging with quantum com quantum, com quantum computation, right? I mean, once we build quantum computers, and once they're, you know, which I mean, I don't know, I'm not an expert. I, I tell people within 10 years we'll have reasonable quantum computers. I don't know. Do you agree with that, Scott? Fifty cubes. Right. <laughs> you know, some, you know, so, something cool. You know, yeah. uh, yeah. ten, ten years, <laughs> I'll put out money on something useful. Different question. Yeah. So, and I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to be completely derogatory about this at all. I mean, I think this is actually very important, right? So let, let me give a few examples, right? So, you know, so like in two CD, right? You know, there's the real time physics of two CD is something that we essentially have no control over except by doing experiments. Right? I mean, you know, the traditional bias QCD and so on says nothing about this, right? But if we had a quantum computer, then we could, you know, we could simulate hadronization in jets, right? You know, I mean, a lot of stuff that, you know, is dealt with in a pretty kludgy way is, you know, we could now just, you know, crush with a quantum computer. Similarly, we could do the evaporation of small black holes in ADS-CFT, right? We could, we could compute the page curve, right? We could, uh, you know, we could, you know, by, by, by running the experiment enough times, um, you know, we could, that's something we could just measure uh, from, from our quantum computer simulating n equals force of free angles. Uh, and as Eva was saying, right, we could also simulate the Hubbard model, right? And we can try and figure out, you know, is the Hubbard model, does it actually describe high TC, you know, in low energy? So that's a thing that we currently don't know where, but, you know, uh, if we had a quantum computer, we could, right? And we wouldn't need to do an experiment, right? We wouldn't need to build the Hubbard model, we would just simulate it on a quantum computer and see. Um, so, and I should say, to me, I mean, this is the really interesting thing about quantum computers. I, mean, I don't care about factoring. I don't care about cryptography, right? I mean, uh, you know, search, whatever, there's a square root of carrots, right? I mean, the, you know, <laughs> I, want, I want to know the page curve, right? I want to know if the Hubbard model has high TC, right? I mean, for me, that's, uh, that's, that's what quantum computers are for. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I want to... You yes, also okay. want to know the computation. I, yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I'm still getting so, 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 but I, I first want to, I first want to present the radical re uh, revolution and then sort of push back on this. I mean, okay, so. so th this revolution, I feel like you're, you know, Columbus discovering America and like, you know, the reason I hear like the natives. I, I was going to say that, yeah. <laughs> That's right. So I mean, right. So that's that's the slogan I wanted to say. It's all of these things: QCD, black holes, the Hubbard model. 
we're running all of this software on the same hardware, right? You know, uh, that's what a quantum computer does for you. So, I mean, to me, a quantum computer is the ultimate break between this idea of the software and the hardware <laughs> being hardwired. You know, it, 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 you know they, they sort of now have been completely separated. And we now, every time we encounter a physics question, we have to ask ourselves, is this a hardware question or is it a software question? So, now I think this isn't without historical analogy. So, so I'm not sure if this analogy is perfect, partly because I, I really don't know enough about this, field, this example to know. But um, I wanted to compare this to, say, like studying fluid mechanics before or after we had efficient classical computers. So that's an example, you know, or chaos, say. Right, I mean, you know, prior, prior you know, I mean, if you go to, I have actually been to a few, um, maybe one or two conferences in my youth on fluid mechanics, and every single talk is numerical. Right, I mean, you know, there's no, there's no point in almost giving a, a, a talk at a fluid mechanics conference. It's not, it's not computational. Uh, and you know, that, we may be headed that way. Right, I mean, so far we've been lucky that, you know, we're unlucky. I don't know that the questions we care about are questions where quantum mechanics is important. So, so, so classical computers haven't been so helpful. Of course, they're still helpful to use them all the time, but not in the same way that fluid mechanics people would use them. Okay, so, all right, now does this mean that we all have to become computer scientists, right? So is Scott right? And, you know, we've all, now, what I'm saying is that we should all just go, you know, join the college and uh, wear the outfit. Not that different from your outfit. So, so I think the answer is no, actually. So, so you know, I don't want to downplay I think this is, you know, it's incredible, right? this way of you know thinking, you know, kind of a very practical thing. You know, maybe we're gonna build quantum computers, what can we do with them? You know, all this great stuff is coming out of that. But um, you know, this brought me you know this brought me back to was a, a wonderful lunch conversation I had a few years ago actually with Lenny and with Eduardo Fradkin and Steve Kittleson. And I was visiting Stanford at the time, we were sitting around having lunch. And uh, you know we were talking about how do we describe what we do. And I said, I work on fundamental physics. And, and Lenny and Steven and Eduardo all looked at me and they said, there's no such thing as fundamental physics. Uh, and you know, I kind of disagreed, but I couldn't, I couldn't convince them at the time. You know? and, I mean, I, you know, if you go look in a quantum field theory textbook or something, you go look in Weinberg, he says, a fundamental field is a field in the wood I mean, Come on, right? Uh, <laughs> clearly, that's not fundamental physics. But I think, what, I think there is such a thing as fundamental physics. And I think that what fundamental physics is, is in fundamental physics you care about the hardware. You know, it's not, it's not enough to just think about all the different programs you could run, you know, or, you know, and they could be on any memory that you want and who cares. I mean, no, no, I mean, the world actually is made out of something. What about the Landauer's information is physical? Uh, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> um, I, I, Physics is information. I don't. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, no. I, I don't want to get into these philosophical questions. Like, do all mathematical, consistent mathematics describe some real universe? No, I, 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 the universe I, I live in, and I do an experiment. Suppose you did an experiment that constrains an interesting parameter, shows that it's zero. You count that as yeah. So you found out that that's the learning about the hardware. Right. Yeah. You're learning about it, but you're finding yeah. out that it wasn't. Yeah, that's right. So you're constraining you're constraining this sort of space of all the possible simulations that you could be running, right? You know, I mean, I think you know, and, and you know, these questions have answers, right? You know, dark matter is either particles or it's not, right? I mean, you know, it doesn't, you know, um, you don't get to. Element qualities fundamental physics or no? Element qualities? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't. I mean, we we have uh, we have to discuss that more operationally, but uh, uh, I mean, certainly the fact that the world is described by quantum mechanics is part of the hardware. It mean, could have been that the world was not described. This is a matter of degree, right? Like each of these layers is sort of the software, the hardware on the previous right. layer. So um, yeah. fundamental physics is really that you're trying to push towards yeah. more and more hardware -y thing. I might turn yeah. out that the universe is a simulation, but I yeah, mean, but that, I think it's something else. Discussion. I mean, but then the point, it won't, it won't yeah. change the quest to find out what the deepest laws we can. Yeah, that's are. right. Yeah. So I mean, so let me, so let me, let me say this in a different way, right? So I think, I think there's a thing which I, I want to emphasize. You know, it's been in the news recently, so I think most of us here are probably on the same page on it. But let me say it anyway. So I want to emphasize that if you simulate the wrong hardware. Um, then you get the wrong answer. Um, 
Um, and, there, and there's a high profile example of this recently, which is these so-called um, analog black holes. Right. So you know there there you know there are people who are saying oh you know we, we simulate you know the near horizon region of a black hole in some fluid system right and then and then they use what happens there to argue for information loss. Uh, so I mean this is a clear example of you know if you decide that you're going to simulate Rindler space right or you decide you're going to simulate you know the assumptions of Hawking's calculation of black hole evaporation then you're going to get the answer of Hawking's you know right I mean the fact that you simulated it. On a fluid instead of on a computer, or instead of on a piece of paper with a pencil, it doesn't matter. You know, it's still it's still the wrong equation, and you still get the wrong answer. Right? So, and, and that's the sense in which hardware, I think, is still important. Right? You know, you, you have to in the end, you have to be simulating the right hardware. Um, now, I should also say that you know, I mean, so that that's a sense in which hardware is is important for for fundamental physics. Um, we also have software problems in fundamental physics. So let me just give an example of that. Um, so, so okay, we think we think that CFT describes ADS, right? That's what Juan said. He's a smart guy, so I'll believe him. Um, but even if I know that CFT is ADS, and I know the Hamiltonian, and I know the Hilbert space, I don't know how to compute the probability that in such and such state, I, if I jump into a black hole and then five seconds later, what's you know what's the probability? I don't know that I see Lenny sitting there smiling. <laughs> it seems like an experiment we can do, but, but even though we know all the hardware, we know it's the CFT, we know the Hamiltonian, we still don't know how to answer this, this question, right? So this is it's somehow a software problem. We can run the program, but we don't know how to read the output. You know, and that's and that, I mean for for me that's sort of maybe the most pressing thing that I'd like to understand, at least in the short term. So you know, as far as far as fundamental physics, you know, I think it's clear that you know there's going to be more to life than just the software. Um, but I would say even for sort of non-fundamental physics, you know, uh, whatever we call, you know, so whatever you know, whatever we call what everyone else is doing, um, I don't think it's true that quantum computation is really going to solve everything. So for one thing, um, even if you can sort of efficiently, from the point of view of Scott, um, you know, simulate the Hubbard model or something, it's still going to be faster to just build it if you can actually build something that, that, that does it, right? You know, so in terms of actually doing technology, right? Say you want high TC, okay? You're not going to have quantum computers in the wires, right? Like, I mean, you know, you're going to you might use the quantum computers to find what to make the wires out of, uh, you know. But in the end, you know, it would just be silly to try and have whatever's in the wires be universal for quantum computation. So you, you, you wouldn't want to do that. There, there, no, I mean, it used to be taken as obvious that building a wind tunnel is just going to be more efficient always right. than simulating things in a, you know, in a general purpose computer. Right. That's not true anymore. Yes, right. And good. So I was going to comment on that, actually. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so a good example of this right, is nuclear weapons, right? So we, I mean, nuclear weapons are designed by simulation now, right? No, nobody, nobody builds them. Yeah. You know, we just we simulate them, and that's how we design them. Isn't that yeah, also example. politically yeah. because of treaties? And yes, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but if it were exponentially harder, the treaties wouldn't matter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the <laughs> treaties wouldn't exist if it weren't true that you could do it, right? So, uh, radio telescopes um, used to be the ocean problem for your transforming hardware. <coughs> so, yeah, that's right. Right, right. So, yeah, yeah that's right. So I don't know. So I mean, so, so like another example, right? So say say that we you know we, we simulate the Hubbard model and we say indeed it's high TC. Will it, will that be? Will we actually be able to use that ability to find materials that have a higher TC? I, I don't know. I actually don't know. In principle, yes, because yeah. if you have the ability to put in the realistic yeah. to do the initial calculation in a quantum computer. Yeah, but but it's still an exponential search, I guess, is what I'm getting at. There's a lot of lattices you could try and a lot of configurations. We only have 100 or something yeah. elements. It's not like very exponential of that. Well, each of the hundred is uh, still big. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's not. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's different. I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that exhaustive search would, would solve this problem. I mean, I, it seems like you would still need some. You know, just the ability to simulate the system doesn't seem to be enough for everything you want. The ability to simulate the system and to simulate the nearby kind. Yeah, you can't do with the real. Um, yeah, that seems right. important. Yeah. Just yeah. parameters. Yeah, play yeah. with the system. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I think it'll certainly yeah. help. It's just yeah. it's not obvious to me that you know as soon that, that you know within five years after we submit no. like the Harvard model. I mean, let me give you a example of this. We know how within ADS EFT to make quantum yield theories that give the transport results of high Yeah. But these are not real. Yeah, that's right. So in theory, space is actually easy. Uh huh. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not even really sure what I'm trying to convince everyone. <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, this, you know, this, 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 these words of hardware and software kind of seem relevant. I know it helps me when I'm thinking about problems to understand. Am I asking about the hardware, or am I act, asking about the software? Um, you know, Sounds I think like you've reinvented the medieval scholastic distinction between form and matter. Everything new is old, right? I don't know. Uh, yeah. um, I mean, I think, I think, you know, so concretely, I think, you know, there's a set of questions that, um, you know, that we can ask about problems that we're interested in, which maybe, you know, those of us who weren't, you know, living in, in the Americas with Scott and Dorit wouldn't have asked, you know, five or ten years ago. So. You know, what is the information that we're interested in? Well, I guess that one you should always ask, but in a precise sense, what is the information? How is it being processed? How is it stored in hardware? And, you know, most provocatively maybe, do we care about the hardware? Do we, do we still care? What is the hardware that's carrying the software? I, 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 do, I still do, I feel like, but, you know, maybe not everyone does anymore. I don't know. All right, so that's all I wanted to say. Thanks.
you know, like to the extent that I understand what people mean when they say they're yeah. not reductionist, that's the most concrete meaning I can give to it. Well, let me make another comment yeah. related to that, actually. So now, now that I'm having to worry about things like applying for grants and so on, I've been realizing that the way that physics is divided, certainly from the point of view of the funding agencies, is based on hardware. Right? There are people who study particles, and there are people who study you know, metals, and there are people who study stars. <laughs> different pots, and they're supposed to go to different conferences, and so on. And I mean, you know, this this whole it from qubit collaboration, right, is a illustration of the fact that this is just not the right way to think about us anymore, right? You know, I mean, we, you know, the thing we have in common, I think, is the software, right? There's long been a respectable discipline of mathematical physics, which, which thinks of it this way. I mean, this is centuries old, isn't it? I don't, don't know if you actually meant to equate uh, the distinction between software and hardware and the distinction between fundamental and less fundamental. No, I didn't want to equate that. But, yeah, so in my mind, uh, two, it's very important to differentiate. Yeah, absolutely, no. Different. So for in, in my mind, then equality is completely software. It's about yeah. information processing. Yeah. And it's completely fundamental. Yeah. Two okay. different distinctions. Yeah. 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 So, but isn't there something slightly murky even about hardware? So for example, suppose that we have a system in which there's a, a duality. Maybe not necessarily ads CFT, but say some supersymmetric field theory in which they're, each sides of the duality are sort of on the same footing in some particular Yeah, way. like this one. Right, so, so well, uh, okay, maybe. I, I'm not, well, I said not ads -CFT. I think that there's, there's some more complications oh, okay. there. But in that case, then, what, what would you say is the hardware? I mean, you know, there may be some sense in which the hardware is not necessarily uniquely defined because there's, there's different degrees of freedom which you could choose to describe it and neither of them. Right, so that, that's a great them. question, right? When I was a grad student, you know, I learned about the high temperature, low temperature duality in the Isaac model. I got very confused. Because if I walk into the room and there's a spin system there and it's at some temperature, that means something. I'm not confused about whether it's at that temperature or it's at one over that uh, temperature, right? And, and indeed, right, it, it's because, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that Ising model in a certain way. It's made out of spins, which are local in terms of the, the variables I use to interact with that, with that, with that piece of metal. And, that, and that's how I know what temperature it is, right? even though sort of mathematically it has this other sort of very non-local description where it's at the other temperature. You're already assigning an interpretation to some of your variables. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I think that's yeah. essential, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Talking yeah. about hardware, it's essential. I mean, hard, when I say hardware, I mean like I am here and I walk around and do stuff. You can't have physics without interpretation. Theory, but somebody does. At the end of the day, some of the variables must yeah. mean something tangible. Yeah, that's right. It seems to me, with or without a quantum computer, you might do simulations from today to tomorrow, forever and ever, and yeah. miss and not discover surprises of that experiment. That's right, yeah. You might have simulated supersymmetric quantum field theory forever and ever and not have discovered that uh, there is no supersymmetry with yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Um, but, but aren't experiments just, it's, I mean, uh, doing an experiment and running a simulation on a quantum computer just are seeming less and less different to me. Well, yeah, until surprises happen. No, but even those surprises, I mean. Uh, you would not have discovered on a quantum computer Simulating quantum electrodynamics, uh -huh. that standard model is there. Oh, no, that's true. Yeah, but yeah. I, I so, might have discovered HTC if I... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but, that, but that's, good. that's a fundamental question, right? That's because the heart, that's actually well, asking about the heart. Well, whether you call it fundamental or not, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's like these guys... Experiment sometimes leads to big surprises yeah. that it's uh, hard to imagine uh, you would have discovered by just running the same thing all the time. Is that any kind of surprise fundamental? What's that? Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I, think I, I think high GC is a very different kind of surprise than uh, yeah. discovering that they're muons, right? Yeah. So you would never discover they're muons by, by, right. by doing simulations, but you would discover high GC if it were cheap. Um, then, you, then, then you just uh, try various you know, things. And I'm not so sure that, uh, that uh, you would discover all things. Yeah, maybe not all. I don't know. Yeah. Mainly those things which turn out to be so surprising that everybody really is. So now we're getting into neuroscience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you have in mind? That it's, you're, you're simulating a real completion, or that you're finding other theories that produce. 
I could do either, right? Simulate. So I, I think, yeah, so one, you could simulate the Hubbard model or you could try and simulate the coup rates, right? And you know, I just, uh, you know, if you give me a computer with, you know, 20,000 qubits or something, I can probably simulate the coup rates to a reasonable accuracy. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know where this is all going, but you know, somehow for me, it, this, this sort of malleability, this, this ability to not care what's sort of holding the information, uh, except except when you do, uh, you know, is, uh, is, is perhaps the most sort of striking thing about most of